Hello everybody, welcome to another Nephilim Builds. Today we're going to go fast as Sonic the Hedgehog. As always, keep in mind that these videos are about capturing the spirit of the character rather than capturing their abilities perfectly. With that said, let's start with ability scores. Using Point Fire will make Dexterity 15. He is the fastest thing alive after all. Next we'll make Wisdom and Charisma 14. His cool factor has withstood the test of time and you need good perception when you're moving that fast. We'll make Strength and Constitution 10. We don't want either of these to be negative. We'll dump Intelligence. Sonic leaves the tech stuff to Tails for a reason. For race, a lot of people like to use Tabaxi for feline agility. Granted, this does make Tabaxi the fastest player race for one turn. The fact that you have to stand in place for a turn to use it again means that anyone with a base speed of 30 will catch up to you on whatever turn you decide to do that. I'm going for a marathon here, not a sprint. Now if you want real speed and to be a rodent, you've got to go hair and gone. We'll put our increases into Dexterity and Charisma and get Perception. We'll also get Hair Trigger for better initiative rolls, Lucky Footwork, and Rabbit Hop. Fun fact, Rabbit Hop doesn't consume movement, so it's actually extra movement. We're gonna have fun with this. We'll also speak Common and Primordial. We'll make a custom background between Animal Handling and Persuasion. We'll also take proficiency with Cook's Utensils to make our own Chili Dogs and get Land Vehicles. Pretty sure Snowboards and Hoverboards count. Moving on to class, we're going to start off as a Monk. We get Strength and Dexterity saving throws and pick Athletics and Acrobatics. We'll also be proficient with simple weapons and short swords as well as the Yarding. Remember Sonic Underground? I do. At level 1 we'll get Martial Arts and Unarmored Defense, and level 2 we'll get Key and Unarmored Movement. At level 3 we'll get Deflect Missiles and Unarmored Master Tradition. We'll take Way of the Drunken Master for Performance, Brewer Supplies, and Drunken Technique. The old Hit and Run Technique. At level 4 we'll get the Mobile Feet and Slow Fall because what is Fall Damage. Next we're going to multi-class the fighter, getting light and medium armor, shields, and all weapons. At level 1 we'll get second wind and our fighting style, taking unarmed fighting, and at level 2 we'll get action surge. Now we're going to multi-class the divine soul sorcerer, getting favored by the gods, and divine magic. We'll pick neutrality for our affinity, getting protection from evil and good. We'll also get four cantrips, taking sword burst for a quick psi loop. We'll also take prestidigitation for air trick effects, and true strike and blade ward to fill the slots. We'll get two spells, taking long stride for speed, and shield for the blue shield power-up. At level 3 we'll get Font of Magic and take Jump for his up B springboard from Smash. At level 3 we'll get Meta Magic, taking Quicken Spell and Extended Spell. I'll also take Silvery Barbs for some quippy one-liners. At level 4 we'll take the Tough Feet and then take Friends to fill the slot and Magic Missile for the Sonic Boom from Sonic Frontiers. At level 5 we'll get Magical Guidance and Haste. Back to Monk, at level 5 we'll get Extra Attack and Stunning Strike, and at level 6 we'll get Key Empowered Strikes and Tipsy Sway. That's it. Back to Sorcerer, at level 6 we'll get Empowered Healing. We aren't getting much use out of this. We'll also get Kinetic Jaunt for some jukes. At level 7 we'll take Enhanced Ability to fill a slot, and at level 8 we'll raise our Charisma and take Water Walking. At level 9 we'll take Death Horde to hold on to that last ring. At level 10 we'll get another Meta Magic, taking Transmuted Spell. We'll need that in a minute. We'll also take Guidance to fill the slot and Freedom of Movement. At level 11 we'll take Investiture of Flame for the Flame Shield power up. We can also use Transmuted Spell on this to make it Lightning Damage for the Thunder Shield. Lastly, at level 12 we'll cap our Charisma and swap Enhanced Ability for Tasha's Otherworldly Guys for Super Sonic. And this is why I prioritize Charisma over Dexterity, to make this feel like a more substantial boost. Same thing as when I made Goku. At the level 20, we finally have our modifiers. For inventory, we'll just take our component pouch to keep our rings in. Our AC with our armor defense is 15, our movement speed is 55, and our average HP is 133 with 2d10, 68, and 12d6 hit dice. And with that, we are done. Now what can this build do? To start, we are the master of hit and run, able to run circles around everyone while we combo them into submission. And with Hair Trigger adding plus 6 to our initiative, there's a good chance we're going first in any combat encounter. We also have options for both ranged and melee combat, as well as a bit of utility with our spellcasting. And when the going gets tough, we go super. Oh, but you don't care about any of that. You want to know how fast we can go. Well, as I said, our base movement speed with unarmored movement and mobile is 55, which we can boost to 65 with long strider. Now double that to 130 with haste. So far, so meh. Now use your action, haste action, action surge, and step of the wind, and suddenly your movement speed is 650. Oh, but I'm not done here. Remember Rabbit Hop? With a full plus 6 proficiency bonus, we can leap up to 30 feet, which turns into 90 with jump. And again, Rabbit Hop doesn't cost movement, it's just extra movement. So even when we use our action surge and run out of key points for Step of the Wind, we can still maintain a very respectable 480 for 6 turns. We can also maintain haste for double the duration with extended spell. Again, I'm going for a marathon, not a sprint. For weaknesses, an uncapped dexterity affects our attack rolls, AC, and saving throws negatively. If I didn't want to give Super Sonic that extra boost, then the smart thing to do would have been to level dex instead of charisma. Feel free to do so in your build, you won't hurt my feelings. We're also very susceptible to all things Mind Flayer with our negative intelligence. And since I know someone's going to bring it up, I did have an entire build planned with Lorebard instead of Divine Soul Sorcerer. 
It would have given me extra skill proficiencies cutting words and would have given me jack of all trades to further boost my initiative. I went with Divine Soul Sorcerer because I was able to get the spells I wanted easier, I got Tasha sooner, and I ended up with 50 more movement speed. I was also able to get key empowered strikes because I wasn't spending two extra levels just to get magical secrets. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, there's a link to my Patreon down in the description. One dollar a month gets you two day early access to my videos, a chance to vote for future characters, and access to all of my homebrew content. Next week is June, so get ready for a month of pride builds. Let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments, and I'll see you all next week when I make Lumity from Owl House.